Thanks for watching. I'm John Rasmus. In this video, we're going to be doing an unboxing of all this Ghost Hunter equipment I've purchased over the last couple days for a ghost experiment I'm going to be conducting. It may only last a couple times. Whether the results are going to be conclusive or inconclusive, we shall see. I have no idea what's going to happen. I'm going to build a little stand for the devices to sit in so they can all stand up because some of them have rounded bottoms and it's hard for them to stand. Once I have opened every single one of them, I will construct this stand and put it in the corner of the room. I'm going to be positioning the seat so you can clearly see what's going on. I will have my GoPro camera very close so we can read all the dials to see if anything happens. But we are going to be opening up these boxes. Let's start right now. Let's start with this one right here. This is video two of my unboxing of Ghost Hunter equipment. So you can check out my other video of my... So just to do a quick recap, the last unboxing, I had this EMF meter, electromagnetic field detector. I had this EMF meter. And then this decibel sound level meter. Now as you can see, they don't stand up very well at all, which is why I have to build this stand custom made for these pieces. Now let's open this package on up. My trusty letter opener. It's not very sharp. There you go. All right, the third EMF meter, straight from China. It is from Guangdong, China, just like the other two. So Guangdong, China is pretty much the capital of EMF meter electromagnetic radiation detector. Here it is. It does not have a battery. But it does come with a, uh, a little stand where you can stand it up. But I'm going to be building this stand to hold all of them. Something inside of there. Just some plastic. Looks like I have to unscrew it possibly to open up the battery compartment. So I'll be testing this out later. It's very similar to the other ones. I pretty much just bought the first three cheapest EMF meters on eBay. So I will put batteries in this later and review it later. Let's open up our next item. It's Ghost Hunter equipment related. I don't exactly know what it is. Wow, this is it. Yeah. Okay, now unlike the other ghost meters and detectors I have purchased, this one is specifically designed for one thing and one thing alone. The detecting of EVPs, electromagnetic voice phenomena, also known as the voices of a ghost. Ghost hunters try to record voices of a ghost, and most of them just use regular recorders. But this Pi diode says Pi right there. And this is not an advertisement. I just randomly purchased some low-cost items on eBay. And this happened to be one of them. I thought it was pretty unique. I purchased two recorders, or I ordered two recorders. One of them should be back there. And one of my recorders I'm going to hook up to this. I don't know exactly how this works. I'm going to have to research a little bit more. But basically, it doesn't have a a microphone like a regular uh, EVP device would have. This has a special diode and I don't quite know what the technology involves but the description on eBay mentioned an apprentice of Carl Jung who had poltergeist encounters apparently perhaps invented this. I have to go back and research a little bit more but someone related to Carl Jung apparently invented this and this is a ghost hunter having created it 
it has been 3D printed, it looks like. So it's really cool. Looks like it was 3D printed. Even printing that triangle shape isn't going to be cheap. So it's pretty nice. I like it. It's unique. And I'm going to test this out in a couple places. You just plug it into a recorder, and supposedly it isolates the sound and only records EVPs as opposed to all this junk noise, which is all over the place. So I'm going to be recording twice, with a regular recorder and with one hooked up to this to supposedly only record EVPs using this special technology. I haven't tested it out yet. I will be doing a review of this in the future, during and after the experiments. I may come to a conclusion on this, but right now it's totally unknown. It's called the Pi Diode by Paranormal Investigations Equipment. So, very cool. Alright, let's check out the next box. I don't want to damage this stuff. Let's hope I don't. Alright. Sometimes you don't need a letter opener. You just break open the cardboard. Yeah, I don't think I need the sword with this one. Okay, so I was talking about recorders, and this happens to be one of the recorders I ordered. It's a high quality recorder. It's used because the new versions are very expensive. I wanted to get, here it is. It's by Tascam. It is a linear PCM recorder, DR07 Mark II. It's a pretty old recorder comes with the manual and it comes with a lapel microphone. Very cool. I'm going to have to test out to see if this is a good one. You know, even a lapel microphone like this has some value. But I'm going to be hooking a lapel up to here and when I walk around in the future, in future episodes, hopefully I can get stereo sound, flawless sound, with no wires. My old Audio-Technica lapel mic, it's just connected to the camera. This, I can be wireless and walk as far as I want. But it's also good for ghost hunting. You see this, it looks a lot more like a ghost hunter device when you move the microphones. This position records the whole room. This position records locally, like a voice, up close. I'm not sure. I will experiment to see which position works best for EVPs, if I can even capture an EVP. But this is the type of device I would put with the other ones, just recording. Perhaps I'll start in this position. But when I'm out walking around outside, I'm most definitely going to have this in my pocket connected with a lapel microphone and I really hope it improves the quality of this show. It was a pretty good deal. I got it used. You can pick these up fairly cheap because it's a pretty old unit. This is from around 2012. It was created quite a while ago but audio technology, something I've seen over the years, audio technology Specifically, this device records in both MP3 and WAV format. Unless you're recording in something better than that, something by Neil Young, some extremely expensive device that you only see at an E3 convention, this device is top of the line. Uh, perhaps the microphone quality has improved over the years, but I doubt it. Unless you really get a studio professional quality piece of equipment. But this is still a professional piece of equipment back in 2012 and I don't believe the audio technology has changed that much that's why I wanted to give it a try both on the field walking around and to try to capture an EVP. I've never listened and looked for an EVP but as you can see in my last video I did record a couple knocks and I believe those knocks were isolated on the old wooden table 
in my backyard. I might show that in the future just to show you where I think it came from. I guarantee you and I assure you, no one was in the backyard in my last video. I was alone, 100%. I saw someone through the window in the laundry room doing laundry or something. I commented, oh, there's, a f there's someone, but in no way, shape, or form were they knocking the table in the backyard. That was an authentic phenomenon. The first knock in that video was very loud and very distinctly wooden. It sounded like... It sounded like... It definitely sounded wooden. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to try to capture things. And this is stereo to microphones. I'm going to be trying to capture higher quality stuff. It's better to analyze. So if you really want to capture EVPs, anything, you're going to want a higher quality recording device such as this. Tascam is one of the brands. I believe Zoom is another good brand and then there's another one. But this is one of the top of the line brands. I can't afford the new models but the old model I think will work just fine. Okay. So I'm going to put this down here. We're going to move on to the next box. Some really cool devices. I think I saved the best for last. This is a very, if I know what it is, a very cool ghost hunting device. I could just set up all the ghost equipment and have it all ready to go. But I want to show you guys the process of you know, I'm just doing this by hand. I'm setting this all up, testing it out, see if it works. It's trial and error. You're definitely going to come across some devices that are garbage. But I think this one, personally, is going to be a winner. Okay. Came in this bag. Let's open it on up. Wow. guessing this is just a receipt. Maybe it shows you how to use it. Okay, instructions showing you how to use it. I purchased this, I believe, from the person who constructed it. This was specifically designed for ghost hunting in mind. This is one of the proximity sensors I was talking about, and it's powered by a 9 volt, so let me go grab a 9 volt real quick. So I just noticed my uh, microphone stopped working. So let's just get that out of my face. This video is going to have horrible quality audio, but it's no big deal. You guys don't worry about it. You don't care if it has pristine audio, right? I mean, my future videos will have amazing audio, and it's one of the reasons I need to get a new mic, but it's really not even the microphone. It's this cable right here. It can too easily be detached. So I pretty much need to buy just a cheap new USB cable for my Yeti Blue. It just too easily gets disconnected. Apologize for the bad sound. So let's just put this dollar store 9 volt. Plug it on in. See if it works. Alright. This is kind of scarily attached. I might have to do some double reinforcement on that. Let's see if it turns on. Ooh, very cool, very cool. Now this is a very simple yet complex proximity sensor. You see it flashing like crazy. That's because I'm holding it. It's meant to be placed on a surface. Let's move Pyromar real quick. Put it down on this surface. Now perhaps these two lights represent the fact that even now it might be vibrating, but as you can see, do a little bit of tapping and you can change the sensitivity. Okay, now this is the sensitivity we're going to have it at during the test. I really don't want to test it out. I'm turning it off. 
because the test has not officially started. But is this not a very cool device? I love the fact that it doesn't make any noises. Some of these ghost hunting proximity devices make the most horrendous beeps and perhaps it's so you can hear it from a, across the house when you're placing these all over the place if you can afford dozens of them. There are ones that are just really annoying, they go beep and we're talking screeching noises. I'm going to be talking about spirit encounters. I'm going to have this with all of the other devices over here with a GoPro on it. And wow, it's bigger than I thought it was. It definitely works. Very cool. I can give the creator positive feedback. The only iffy thing is I guess the the back is kind of velcroed together with some glue. Glue and velcro. So if I could give any recommendations just maybe house this. I'm probably going to duct tape it just in case. But I suppose it's safe and secure. Definitely a very cool device. And it's one that I'm going to be using and relying on probably more so than the other ones because proximity is proximity is proximity. Sure, if someone slams the door outside or bangs on the wall outside, it will register. But if I can most definitely show you no one is around and it's 3 a.m., and I could even show you the place, but I'm not going to. It's not an all-access tour. We're at the final box. Let's open it up. I think I saved the best for last, although that last one is pretty amazing. It's pretty phenomenal. Doesn't need too much force. Looks like I could just open it on up. Wow. Now I think this is possibly one of the best purchases. This is a proximity device as well. Amazing. Wow. Okay. The reason I purchased this proximity device and this proximity device, two different ghost hunting proximity devices, both specifically designed and created for the hunting of ghosts. Amazing. I'm really glad about the size and it supposedly has different modes. We're gonna have to borrow the battery out of this one real quick to test it out. I just hope those modes don't involve noise but if they do I hope there's an option to turn off the sound as no sound. While I'm talking about stuff I'm gonna have a GoPro. All we need is lights and flashes we're going to be reading the meters. We don't need distracting noises while we're trying to talk and make a video. So I don't really need any loud special effects. I've never turned this on. This is basically called a ghost pod. And I didn't create it. The person who I purchased it from, I don't believe they created it. They picked it up. They had ghost hunting equipment they were selling off. You know, when you need a bare essential necessities, Ghost Hunter equipment isn't exactly the top thing you keep your whole life. Although, I may perhaps keep this set, this amateur ghost hunting set, together. Okay, let's plug it on in. See what happens. Okie doke. Okay. So let's turn off the sound, if that's possible. Oh, Got the one with the noise sound effects. So this is how it works. 
I believe it's the static electricity field. And uh, unfortunately it makes noise. I could just knock out the speaker and get rid of it. But I'm just going to keep it as is. It does appear to be this side of the antenna, this side of the antenna. In that case, they should have put the antenna in the middle. But it's still a very cool device, despite the annoying sound. I like the fact that it's pretty quiet. If it's going to be back here, that's not going to be too loud, not going to be too distracting. Definitely going to get my attention, and I'm definitely going to be turning around saying, what's that? But this corner is far enough away where my hand isn't going to be touching that. And the reason it's not on right now is because the experiment has not officially started. So there is the unboxing. Let's just do a recap. We've got this device. I believe it's static electricity field, maybe EMF field. We could test that out later on. We've got this Pi diode which records EVPs not using a regular microphone but a special diode. We have the new EMF meter which looks dirt cheap very similar to my other two EMF meters. You know, if I had to guess, I haven't even conducted any experiments yet, if I had to guess these three are probably not going to pick up anything. That would be my guess. We're going to find out. I just wanted to cover the bases just in case one of them is sensitive and one of them is not. The price was very cheap. Then we have the decibel sound sensitivity device. Then we have this you know, fairly professional audio recorder. And then we have this one. This amazing, I like this one a lot. Perhaps one of my more favorite ones. Because let's face it, during encounters, stuff moving and stuff creaking, stuff knocking. This would most definitely detect that. If you had a camera on that and you could prove you're not doing it, it's pretty good evidence to me. One more device I'm waiting on. It is simply a cheap low budget recorder. I, I need two recorders because I need one to record the regular natural sound. I need one to be hooked up to that Pi diode because that Pi diode by itself doesn't do anything. It needs to be plugged into the headphone jack and then we can officially start the experiments in the corner of my room. To be honest, it's not going to be something that's fun in games. It's a little bit scary, even for me. Why am I doing it? I have various different reasons why I'm doing it. If it gets out of hand, the experiments stop. Because this is my, these are my living quarters. I don't want to exactly have ghost hunting equipment going off on all hours of the day and as a matter of fact right after this video I'm going to be putting it in my case that you saw in the last unboxing video it's going to be in the case locked but I'm going to build a nice little stand and have it really visible so you can see it over my shoulder I'll move the camera I'm really stoked about testing this stuff out stay tuned more videos coming soon, ghost hunting themed videos. If something extraordinary happens or even semi big, I'm going to save it for the new show. I believe the first episode is going to be ghost hunting themed. I have to include it. The new show is going to have perhaps the best content. I believe the show is ten times better than Occult Unmasked and Hoax Hunter put together is my goal and hope and uh, if nothing happens and I don't detect anything I'll try it nine more times if after ten times nothing happens it will simply be here's a ghost hunting experiment if something happens even a little bit 
I'm going to do a live show and record it live so you can see I'm not rigging it, staging it, or anything like that. No editing is going to take place. This video, if you see editing, it's because no one wants to watch a 32 minute video of an unboxing. I'm going to cut to the chase, make it easier to watch for you guys. Hopefully I can cut it down to 15 minutes. Stay tuned, more episodes coming soon. I'm going to be filming tomorrow and the next day and the next day. The episodes for the new show, but not the ghost hunting experiment yet. I have to build that case. That will take a little bit of time. We are waiting on that one recorder. And I'm going to be recording some scenes, filming some scenes for the new show this week. More episodes coming soon. I apologize for the bad audio. The audio cable got disconnected. It happens all the time. I thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Subscribe. Click the bell icon for notifications. Be seeing you.